Good morning. It's good to see all of you here this morning. Welcome. Gosh, this has been a crazy week. Anybody else have a crazy week this week? But it's been a good week. So we're glad to gather back in and worship together today. I know we've got a lot of folks still in the field, so please remember to watch out for tractors and pray for our farmer friends. Um, also, the Usefulness Committee has been very useful. They have a great name because they've been cleaning again, and there's some freebie stuff in the fellowship hall. So take a look and see. There's um, everything from booster seats to walkers. So <laughs> from the start of your life and <laughs> towards the end. But uh, there's a few things out there, so please Help yourselves to those. No fighting over it, however, but we will accept arm wrestling <laughs> over items <laughs> if you need them. And then Miss Rhonda has a an announcement for us this morning. Okay, as you all know, the Chorus Board is coming up. So we're passing around the clipboards to sign up for stuff for our country folks. So I'll start going over here with Mitch. <laughs> I know what to do with that. Okay. Pass it on. All right. Thank you, Rhonda. Be sure to sign up for things for the smorgasbord, um, and uh, I'm sure they'll be glad to receive those items. And um, we're looking forward to that. Any other announcements today? Uh, Halloween social is this Saturday. Halloween yeah, social. There are flyers back there. Okay, Halloween social, smorgasbord, the country store. There's a lot coming up as we get ready to head into the later part of the year, and then we'll have Advent and Christmas and all those things as well. So I'd be very interested in seeing if there's some interest in singing uh, for the Christmas season. If you would like to sing uh, a solo or if you have a little group you'd like to sing with or if you'd like to join the choir maybe Debbie and I could work on something to to sing especially for uh, Christmas Sunday and, and all of that so if you would be interested in that let us know and um, we're just so appreciative and I'm really appreciative for those of you who were able to get out to the coffee shop yesterday and come down to Cloverdale thank you for that and uh, it was good to see a handful of people come out and uh, to our open house it wasn't a soft open yet but it was an open house just so I could get the crazy out of the way <laughs> and see what that was like and it was really crazy it was chaotic but it was a lot of fun and I learned a lot so thank you for that is there anything else all right, Debbie will lead us into that spirit of worship with her beautiful music.
Join me for the call of worship. Let's all stand, please. The world belongs to God, the earth, and all its people. How good and how lovely it is to live together in unity. Love and faith come together, justice and peace hold hands. If the Lord's disciples keep silent, the stones would shout aloud. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Join from the hymn and praise number three, Holy, 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 verse one and four. Dear God, we give thanks to you, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, for another beautiful day with our loved ones. And as we conduct our day, you are forever in our hearts and our thoughts. We ask for your love and guidance and protection in everything we do and keep our hearts open to today's message. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And be seated. Will the deacons come forward? In 2 Corinthians, it says, For if the willingness is there, the gift of acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does or does not have, we have given according to what we have. We please him with our offering from our heart. Join me in today's offertory. Of blessing prayer. O oh God, we bring these gifts like red raspberries in a cup, like dandelions in a bouquet, bought by a six year old. They never seem like enough, and we are never quite enough to take the cactus fruit, to get the people fed, to get the good news spread. Please give us So when we offer them your blessings, confident in your grace, which makes raspberries a feast and dandelions a fragrant garden. 
Amen. You may be seated. And now it's time for Susie. some of our grandkids and we went to the beach. We went to the ocean and here's a picture of what the ocean looked like from, yeah, look, look how it goes on and on and on, doesn't it? It's so pretty. We built, um, we played, we played, hey, hang on a minute, hop back, nope, hop back up there. Okay. We played in the sand, we built sand castles, um, we played down at the waves, they come in and got, our, got us all wet. Have you ever built a sand castle? No. Did you go for a swim? Benjamin wanted to knock them down every time we built them. So finally, one day, he was taking a nap, and we got to build one that stayed up. But um, You mean like with wet sand? Like, yeah. Yeah, with wet sand. Some of it was wet. And along the beach, we went shell hunting. Have you ever searched for shells? No. Let me show you some of my shells. Here. here. I have a, I have a beach. Okay. Let me show you some of my shells. Look. Here's what I found interesting about the shells. They're all a little bit different. They're all unique and special, just like God made all of you unique can I, and special. Can I, see, can I see that you one? You know what? If you sit right down there, I'll let you see them all in just one second, okay? <laughs> Look at this one. It is smooth on the top, but it's rolly, kind of rolled, isn't it? Here. Is there a giant squid? There's nothing in these. Believe me, oh, well, we brought some stinky like ones home. Humongous, like, black Okay. Here, look at this one. It has lines. Oh, yeah. See the little lines on it? Yeah, I've seen that. Have you seen I that? Oh, Have you seen those kind before? No. Have you seen that kind before? I haven't seen that. I want to see more. Okay. Here, you can hold this one because I don't think I don't think you can swallow that one. <laughs> so, so what I need, what I, what I think is really neat about the shells is they're all really cool and different, aren't they? Yeah. You want to hold it? Okay. All right, let's talk, about, let's talk about how this ocean reminded me of, can you hold that one? Can you hold that one? I don't trust, I don't trust these lower ones with him. You want to hold this one? Okay, the ocean was so big and mighty and strong, and that reminded me of God and how big and strong and mighty he is, right? And Savannah, Savannah, how much he loves us, right? It, it goes on and on and on. Look at this water. Look, it goes on and on and on, doesn't it? Guess what? God's love goes on and on and on. Can you, we can't measure how much he loves us, can we? Because it's so big. Show me big. Yes, it's, it's so big. And God made all these wonderful things, just like he made all these shells different. And he made all of you different because he loves us so much. Guess what? He loves us so much. He gave us Jesus, this, didn't he? Look at this one, Uncle. You know what? Why don't you guys take these here? Put them in here for a minute so you can concentrate on this last little part. And now you're going to need your hands anyway. You can look at them when we go down to the classroom, okay? But I lost my train of thought. I don't know why. But <laughs> something about, let's see, where was I going? I don't even know. I don't even know. So, so um, God's love for us is so amazing and so big that he gave us this one and only son. So sh get your fingers ready. Get your fingers ready. He gave us Jesus. Jesus died for my sins and rose again. And that's the greatest love, isn't it? Yes. Isn't that amazing? His love for us, listen to what it says from the Bible. God's word, okay? This is God's word, isn't it? Um, let me see if I can read this. Because I should have wrote it a little bigger. And may you have the power to understand... God's people should, as God's people should, how wide, show me wide, how long, how high, 
and how deep is God's love for us, right? God's love is so big. We can't measure it, but we can sing about it. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Inside of us, we've got that fountain, don't we? That fountain of love that comes from Jesus. Let's sing it one more time. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Awesome. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. We've got a good story with Mindy here in a minute about Moses. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for loving us so much. We can't even measure how much you love us, but you gave us Jesus, and we thank you for Jesus. Amen. Okay, use your walking feet, and Tanner and Parker's mom's going to take these down. You can look at them. Hey, just take the whole thing down. Just carry the whole thing. Carry the whole thing down. There you go. Perfect. Oh. Have you back? I did the children's moment last week, and I know why you got distracted. <laughs> there is an unspoken prayer request this morning. Um, so many of us maybe have those as well, just that there's just a concern for um, how sometimes people handle things when life gets really, really tough, and uh, sometimes we don't make the best choices during those times. So um, that is a concern on a person's heart uh, this morning, and so we are going to uh, lift up in prayer to God today those things that weigh heavy on our hearts. Are there other uh, concerns or joys that you all would like to share? It's good to have Frank in worship. Welcome home for a little while. <laughs> We're glad you're here today. Any other joys and concerns, Miss Kathy? My heart is so happy for Israel. I am. It, it, it's not any better. In fact, every day is worse. And we're yeah. getting surrounded and we don't know how we'll handle it. And I think because I've been there, mm -hmm. uh, they've always said when you walk the walk, walk the, the roads Jesus walked, mm -hmm. you come home different. Mm -hmm. and, and it's true. It's yeah. very true. And they're not saved in, in the way they should be. And, mm -hmm. and I just want to make sure we pray for them. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. My brother came home from the hospital, and he is doing much better. That's good news. That's good news. All right. Any other choice and concerns? Let's prepare our hearts to go to the Lord in prayer. We'll sing uh, Holy Ground. We'll sing it through twice, found on page 138, or follow along on the screen.
Heavenly Father, every time we come into your presence, we realize we're on holy ground. And as we kneel, stand, fall before you, we give you thanks and praise for all that you are to us, all that you bring to our lives and to our hearts. Lord, we're just, uh, many of us coming to you this morning with really heavy hearts, heavy hearts over so many things, the loss of friends and loved ones and um, in our community and in our lives. And Lord, over Israel, we're just so concerned and wanting to stand with your people. And Lord, we just uh, want everyone there to be safe and for there to be peace on this earth. Lord, we uh, ask that you would help us in these times. We're just so confident in your Holy Spirit. We're thankful for that scripture that reminds us that when we don't know what to say, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And Lord, in these moments when we just don't know what to say, we have no words. We ask that you would enter, uh, intercede on our behalf and on the people that we love on their behalf. And Lord, you know the needs. You know all the needs. And we pray, Lord, that you would strengthen those who need your help, those who need your peace, those who need your protection and comfort. Lord, help us to be the people of faith who stand firm uh, with Christ and who share the good news of his love with all those who would uh, come into our lives and, and want to know more. Lord, we just ask that you would continue to be with those who are on our prayer list. We rejoice with uh, Joan and uh, thankful that her brother's home from the hospital. We're just so grateful, Lord, for his healing. And Lord, we just pray that you would continue to be with him and strengthen him for all of those concerns that are on our hearts this morning, both joys and concerns. We give them to you, Lord, and lift them up to you, asking that you would uh, give us your peace. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, <coughs> thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. if you will, to the Gospel of John, chapter 12. We're going to look at verses 1 through 8 today. So John, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Hear the word of the Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard and expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Thanks be to God for the reading of this word this morning. 
Now this is your interaction time. I want you all to share with me a time when you received a gift, if you want to share, uh, you re maybe received a gift that you knew was a sacrifice on the part of the giver. Anybody ever receive a gift that you knew was a sacrifice on the part of the giver and that you'd like to tell us about? Anybody think of a time? You can? Okay. <laughs> Where is that book? Um, when I was in college, my junior year, I had the option of spending part of the year in England and doing, student, doing some student teaching over there. And my, my dad sacrificed every paycheck <laughs> oh, wow. set money aside for me so I could do that. Oh, that's so, awesome. So you got to study in England because your dad made a sacrifice to put that money aside. That was a gift, a good gift. Awesome. Anybody else? A sacrifice on the part of the giver, and you knew it when you got the gift. And there just weren't any words. Anybody? Yeah. Oh. I had given, my dear friend had cancer. And I had given her, it was three angels, really tall. And she kissed them and said, you take these back and you'll always remember me. And that was for Christmas and she died. Aww. That's so sweet. I put down and I remember And you remember her. her. Yeah. That's, That's a sweet, sweet thing. Anybody else think of a time that you want to share? Well, it was at Christmas. <clears throat> My youngest daughter, Becca, was still in high school, and she was working at Rural King in Terre Haute. And I, it was during that time when I was really into this Par, uh, crocs called beasting pottery and you've probably seen them they have the little swirl and the number of what the size croc it is and it looks like a little beasting that's how it got its name it's blue and they're usually fairly pricey I was going to bring one and I forgot it I just I was pushing myself this morning to get moving for some reason and um, I forgot it but it was a beautiful piece and so it was Christmas that year and I opened up this package and it was this bee sting crock. I thought it was from Randy. Well, he did get me one, but it said, love you mom from Becca. And here she is, she's working at this, you know, at Rural King, she's just a kid and she, she sacrificed this money to buy this crock for me. And it was hard to believe, but I was rendered speechless. <laughs> I just cried, you know, and I'm just like hugging her and thanking her. And I'm, I hope and pray that I didn't say something stupid like, oh, you shouldn't have or because it was just such a gift. You know, she really wanted to give that gift. And so I'm really thankful that, that I have kids that are, that, you know, see that there's something beyond. Um, and she just, that was just such a special time, such a special gift. And I thought about that as I was reading this passage of scripture. A pound or a pint of this expensive perfume would have cost about a year's salary. And it was a very um, expensive and extravagant thing to have on hand. But every family tried to set aside enough money to get some of this uh, fragrant nard, uh, perfumed ointment, and they would use it during really special, special times or during a person's burial in their family. They would anoint the body with it um, after that person died. So this was a really expensive and extravagant thing that Mary has, is doing for Jesus. And so she comes in and, and she does it. Here's the thing that really sticks out to me about this passage of scripture is that she lets her hair down and she kneels before Jesus and she pours this perfume, this extravagant, expensive gift over his feet and then wipes them with her hair. Now, several things stick out to me. That was a servant's job to, do, to wash feet. But we know Jesus set that example later on. And so he set that very example for them. But also, she did not take into consideration the, what people would say. How many of us are worried about, well, what will people think? 
if I do this? Or what are people going to say if they see me do this? So this is something that seems like kind of an intimate thing, and it's almost like, oh, should I be watching this? And But she didn't think about that. She didn't care. She wanted to share her love for Jesus. Why? Because he had been so extravagantly giving to her. So there's a lot of Marys, and I challenged Mitch <laughs> the other day with discovering all these different Marys in the Bible. And I say it's pretty clear, at least in this passage to me, that this is Mary, Lazarus's sister. Did you get that when you were studying? Good. <laughs> because otherwise the whole sermon has to stop now <laughs> and we move on. <laughs> and so I think that, that Mary, Jesus says to them, you know, she's anointing me for burial. But I'll, I don't think Mary thought that. And maybe you, you don't either. I think what she thought was, he returned my brother to me. Now think about her culture and her age and where she lived and who she was. This was a culture in which women had no rights. Women could not possess uh, anything. They could not possess property. They did not have uh, the kind of rights that thankfully we have here and today. And so without her brother, what was she going to do? I'm guessing her family, her parents were gone because it's the three of them living together, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And so here the greatest gift is that she was given back her brother and so he comes and he's sitting around, he's talking with these people and everybody's talking about, you know, oh, well, I did this or I did that. And she gets down on her knees and she washes his feet with her hair and just blesses him with this. And it filled the whole house. Did you hear that when we read that? It filled the whole house with the fragrance of that offering. And I love that. That's beautiful, isn't it? So what is it that, that we learn from this story? One of the things that I think we learn from this story is to be grateful for all that God has given us and that when, when we are shared and, and things are just bestowed on us and God just blesses us, then we can in turn bless others. We can share, we can sacrifice and give and share with others. And when we do that, then it rises up like this beautiful, fragrant offering into God's nostrils. He smells that fragrant offering of love and says, that's what I want to see. That's my child. That's my people acting that way, blessing someone and doing for others. And that becomes that fragrant offering that rises up to God and blesses God when we are generous and when we offer our, our support, our care, our love to others. And I just think this is such a beautiful passage. Jesus remarked that Mary was anointing his body for the death that he would be facing in just a few short days. And I think he was trying, what he was trying to do was to set that tone. Remember it said just a few days before Passover that he had gathered for this meal. He was trying to prepare them for what was about to happen, though nothing really could have. And so he's, he's offering them uh, some guidance. He's offering them some, some insight into what's going to happen. And so Judas then raises up his voice and says, that was a waste. Oh, man, that was a waste. How often, I wonder, do I say such foolish things to, in my ignorance about what God is doing in our lives and in other people's lives when I, when I see someone being very generous? And that person just is never going to change. That person... We can that's throw in good money after bad. Anybody ever say that, hear that? That's throwing your money away. They'll, a leopard doesn't change his spots. Don't send them to rehab one more time. It's a waste of money. They'll never stop drinking. They'll never stop taking drugs. They'll never change. And so we join our voice with Judas when we say things like that. That's a waste. But Jesus said, leave her alone. She's praising me. She's preparing me. 
It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You'll always have the poor with you. And I think what Jesus is saying is here is let, let people be extravagant in my name. Let people be extravagant in my name. Extravagant in all kinds of ways. Love extravagantly. The person who smells bad, who's broken, who's lost. Grab them up and hug them and love them extravagantly. And you know what? That stench is then changed to a fragrant offering in the nostrils of God. Amen, church? And Jesus said, it's not foolish. It's not a waste. It is a beautiful offering and blessing to God. Some have wondered at this phrase, you're always going to have the poor with you and maybe have used it as a rationalization to not be generous. I think that's silly. <laughs> Quite honestly, I think that's silly and would not imagine any one of us coming up with that idea. Perhaps you, like me, understand it this way, that Jesus received Mary's extravagant gift because it was offered in love. And we can never love enough. Jesus did not reject Mary's love, nor did he reject the poor. Much of their work was done to the relief of those who were poor in every way, poor in spirit, poor in, um, in their uh, possessions. I think Jesus' acceptance of Mary's gift set the stage for all who were present and for all of us who would read the story. Our gifts of love are received by Jesus. Our acts of worship and devotion lift up to heaven as a fragrant offering. And then one last comment on this passage. I think that Jesus commented about the poor because they had ministered to them. And I wonder if maybe he was alluding to the fact that their acts of worship and devotion, as well as our acts of worship and devotion, fill the whole house of heaven with the fragrance of love. And I wonder if that, that fragrance brings God joy. Like coming home to the smell of baking bread after a long day. Like the gift we can't repay. Like the child who hands us a bouquet of dandelions and they become a fragrant garden. All our acts of worship and love directed at the one who gives the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ. Amen. If there's anybody here this morning who would like to receive that precious gift, that gift of salvation from Christ, we invite you to come forward. Or if you'd like to rededicate your life to him or join this fellowship of believers, we invite you to come forward as we stand together and sing, I am thine, O Lord, uh, page 552, verses 1, 2, and 4.
Father, we come before you once again in prayer. I pray that you'd bless this congregation uh, this week. Let them feel your peace and your joy in their lives. And Lord, help us to be a fragrant offering in all that we do. Help us to give and love and, and serve you extravagantly. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.